95% of homesteads in the developing countries rely on firewood fuel for their domestic energy. This then translates to depleting forests. Realizing how fast trees were disappearing from the Ngong forest, Dominic Wanjehia decided to come up with a fuel solution to the Maasai community in Ngong and this gave birth to the Flexi Biogas. About five years ago I was given a challenge to come up with a solution for the Maasai communities behind the Ngong hills who are cutting down trees, making charcoal for the uh, people of Kitengela, which is, which is booming. I came up with a Flexi Biogas system and um, it took about a year and a half to two years to develop it and then the demand um, picked up and so we commercialized, we, we, we formalized the business. Flexi Biogas is a portable system unlike the conventional biogas dome that have been used over the last two centuries. And I'm allowing it to spill, it's not very responsible. But you can see there's no explosion like with, um, with LPG or any other gas. So we put our system on the ground instead of underground. Then on top of that, to increase the temperature, we've encased it in the, the greenhouses or the micro tunnels. Um, that increases the temperature right up. So even in a place like Uplands or Limuru, which are, I would say, the, some of the coldest areas in Kenya, dome systems will not work because the temperatures, methane basically will not be produced below uh, 15 degrees. These systems work perfectly well. Due to its setting, an average homestead of four to six people needs just one cow to produce enough gas. The average homestead requires about 1,000 litres of gas per day. These, with one bucket of cow dung from one cow, will give you over 1,000, about 1,000, 1,200 um, litres of gas. This system not only uses cow dung, but also all other forms of dung, as well as organic waste, including kitchen waste, water hyacinth, grass and other plants. These systems, because of their design, we call it true cross-flow um, methodology, they will run on anything. Then if you go into now the higher food products, like your cereals, you'll get even far, far higher, higher gas. Um, your maize, your maize, wheat and uh, bran are cereals. Then you move into the bean family. You'll get even higher volumes of gas if you were to feed beans. Your oil nut uh, plants will give you, uh, your nuts and, and oil plants will give you the highest uh, uh, levels of gas. The digester is fed once every day and in turn, the output bio slurry is used as fertilizer. Feeding is normally, we tell you to feed it once a day. Get into a routine. It's it's like it's like a, it's like it, we, it's like a pet. If you you've got to water it and give it food, and it will give you high returns. Just just like an animal, it is the stomach of an animal, so it isn't it's alive, if you may. So um, provided you maintain it, it's fine. The system can produce enough for lighting. It can also be used to run a 3,000 watts generator at the ratio of 20% diesel and 80% biogas. Since its inception, they have installed the system to 700 homesteads in Kenya and are expanding to other countries. Their main challenge, though, is lack of trust from Kenyans since it's all made locally. It's a very new technology and it's not imported. Kenyans like imported things. So because it's Kenyan, they are reluctant to, how do you say, take the first, um, take the first step. They want to see somebody else with it first. They want to see someone else take the risk. Dominic wishes more people could gain an interest to learn more about the system and put it in use as they will be saving posterity, reduce the number of people dying from illnesses related to indoor air pollution from household and solid fuel uses and save millions of shillings used in buying fuel. Marete Salvin, GBS News.